Welcome back to another episode of the Art Sensei. Today we're going to be looking at three art products that I've uh, been wanting to review for a while, um, just haven't had a chance to. Uh, it's going to be the Faber-Castell 12 uh, count 9000 pencils. Uh, these are my go-to pencils for my figure drawings and for layouts. Um, the general multi-pastel chalk pencils, uh, pastels, um, they are great for composition, um, drawing the figure, um, getting the pose right, and they come in really cool earth tones. And last but not least, the Copic Multiliner. Um, these are still brand new, I haven't touched them, just because I have a ton already, um, but I can never have enough of these. Um, these are the replaceable ones, they are not the disposable ones, so you can change the nibs and the cartridges. But uh, I will show you in the video. So hopefully you enjoy this video, and if you do, please give a like and leave a comment. Um, always love to read your comments, and I love to respond. All right, let's get to it. All right, so the very first set we're going to look at is the Faber Castell uh, 12 um, pencils. Uh, it's the 9000 series. Uh, there's a big difference between the 9000 series and then the regular Gold Faber or Gold Faber. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm saying it incorrectly, but. Um, those are the two differences. Um, I mean, they're ne ne negligible at most. Um, if you go with the lower end Faber Castells, the way you know is where they're where they're made. Uh, these 9000 series are made in Germany, whereas the Gold Fabers are made in Indonesia, I believe. So opening it up, um, always great presentation. Uh, you got a book here, just trying to um, explaining the pit and the monochrome. Um, the uh, aqua rails are actually part of the 9000 series, but I'm not going to be looking at those today. I've already done a video on those. I'll link it up in the top here. Uh, this is just explaining the um, the Albert Durer collection. Um, he's one of my favorite favorite painters, um, but uh, this line is really close to how his paintings look. Very watercolor-esque and, and oily. Uh, something that I'm just not really good at, so that's why I haven't really touched upon those. I'm, I'm more of a black and gray um, and uh, graphite and ink kind of guy. Even when I use my Copics, um, I don't feel like I am a complete expert on Copics. I can collect them, I can, you know, uh, maintain them, but I don't think I am 100% an expert on that. Uh, there's plenty of other channels that do that. So uh, in this set, we have a range from 5H all the way to 5B. Now, I have another set. Uh, that set, I do have an 8B. Uh, the nice thing about having hardness and then softness is that instead of using a blending stump, you can use your H's to blend, um, which I'm gonna show you right now in this video. All right, so I'm gonna crack this open and uh, do a quick uh, demonstration. So I pulled out a sketch here that I did. Um, it was a sculpture of uh, Rodin. Um, just a quick geometric study of it. Uh, but I thought it'd be a good um, starting point to kind of show you what I meant by blending and everything. Um, I'm gonna do a quick gradient here so you could just see the different uh, levels of, of darkness. Uh, as we know that uh, you know, the higher number you get, the darker you get. So this is the 5H over here. Uh, the reason is the H is a lot harder, so it can mark up your paper if you're not using the correct kind of paper. Uh, this is a heavyweight drawing pad from Strathmore, the 400 series. Uh, they can get a little pricey. So as you're going up, you, you'll notice that it is getting darker um, until you get to the H and the HB. That's kind of like your, your mid-level. So this is 5H, 4H. This is your 3H. And I, I, I'll show you what I, what I, why I draw like this now. Um, you just get a lot more control over the pencil. Whereas when you draw like this, you're using a lot of your wrist and it tends to look like chicken scratch if you do that. Um, you'll notice a lot of artists say, oh, that, that looks really chicken scratchy. 
Um, <laughs> and that's what they mean by that is that's what chicken scratch is, um, where, you know, when you're drawing and you're just making too many of the same lines instead of making one really soft and, um, really permanent stroke. All right. So now this is the F and you see his F it's a very fine pencil. It's a good in between pencil. I like to use the F for fine details in the background because it's not a really dark pencil. Um, that fine detail in the background really pops out against the darker tones that you have. Uh, this is the HB. This is the one that I think everybody is uh, who you know is in grade school or in college is really used to um, the HB and the 2HB. Uh, it's kind of like the standard for those um, test papers. Now we're getting in the B's, and this is when you're going to start to notice your pencil fall apart. Um, the B's are very brittle. They will break apart um, when you are using them, and you'll notice that you can have a 5H look the same for years, but your, your B's tend to be that small within a year. Um, so that's the big difference, but I am doing a really light push on these uh, just because I have a drawing underneath here and I'm not trying to mark up the back of the paper. Uh, this, this is actually from my college uh, figure drawing class. Uh, I used to do layouts in this book. Uh, so that's why there's not a lot of finished uh, drawings here. And I will zoom in on these, uh, this number scale so you can see a little bit more clearly. Uh, this is the 4B. Uh, 4B is kind of like my go-to. Uh, I like to do 4B, 6B, and 8B. Uh, and then I'll have a 2H for blending. But for this video, I am going to do a uh, 5H blend on a 5B drawing. So I'm going to be using the 5B right now. And uh, let's take a look here. So this is not what the figure looked like, but it's just so, so you can see. And it's a little ASMR for you. I know the, the, the microphone's a little far away, but yeah, it's really relaxing. It's uh, kind of like Bob Ross, you know, when he used to do the little scratches with the, uh, with the paintbrush. All right, so this is the 5H. And this is what I mean by blending with your pencils. So you can actually get in there. Uh, make sure to use the side, because if you use the top, you're gonna leave some marks and they, they're barely visible. But you see how much darker it's getting just by blending with the 5H. And later on when I do the tutorials on the Five Nights at Freddy stuff, uh, you're gonna see uh, what I mean by really blending out. Um, Five Nights at Freddy's has been a fun little experiment on the channel. Um, I really didn't think anything of it. I just started putting up videos of my kids challenging me to draw stuff I didn't know about. And uh, now I am kind of invested in, in the show, or in the, in the game, rather, um, and the lore. The lore is more interesting to me than the game, because the game is like a video camera. But <laughs> um, I wanted to do a quick step-by-step -step, uh, on how to draw some Five Nights at Freddy's characters. So there you go, that's blending with the pencil. I mean, you can still use a blending stump, um, but now the next thing I wanna show you is the difference between the regular Faber-Castell and the 9000 series. So let me just grab one of those and we'll continue. So when it comes to pencils, you kinda of get what you pay for, um, but at the same, at the same token, um, when you use a pencil, it depends on what you're using it for. Um, you don't really need a high quality pencil if you're just gonna be doodling. Um, you can easily do uh, a quick sketch with a cheap you know, pair from uh, Walmart or, or uh, Michaels, but these are the brands that I kinda use on a regular basis. Uh, this is the Gold Faber. This is the one that is made in Indonesia. Um, they're still great pencils, um, and you can get a lot of them for the same price that you would get the 12 pack of the 9000 series. Um, my biggest complaint with these is because I like to sharpen the pencil this way, 
Uh, when I do push down pretty hard, they tend to break. Um, and I will do a scale here. Uh, this will be the gold. I'll just enable it gold. This is 9,000. This is the um, Bremen. Uh, I got a couple of these when the Joanne Fabrics near my house closed. Um, these are okay. Um, not a big fan with the saturation levels. Um, they don't really saturate as much as I'd like. And by saturation, I mean, you know, when I get in an area, um, I don't like to see white spots where when I use a 9000 series, I feel like I, I cover way more of the area with the same amount of pressure. Whereas with these, I kind of have to really get in there to really push those whites out. Um, so that's, you know, that's a big difference right there. But right here, I'm just going to show you with the same amount of pressure, the big difference in, in these. Now the Kimberleys, you've probably seen them everywhere between Walmart, Michaels, Joann's, uh, uh, even Hobby Lobby. Um, Kimberly is a really well-known brand. They're a good brand. Um, but uh, I have seen some pretty... Uh, Eh, pieces that I've made with them so I'm not um, I won't use them for a big portrait or something for a school project and then this one is a recent one that I picked up uh, this is the moleskin pack uh, it came with a moleskin notebook that I picked up uh, these are all 2Bs except uh, except the Bremen I don't have a 2B in Bremen for some reason um, so I picked the next level, which would be a 3B. And you'll see, even with a 3B, um, the 2B of the 9000, it's just still more, there's more rich darks, and you just don't get that um, level of uh, non-saturation. I know saturation is the wrong word I'm using, um, but to me, uh, since I've been working digitally so much, I've been using a lot of digital terms, so... Um, when you saturate an area, it's just kind of full of one uh, one color. So, um, so here we're going to start with the moleskin. Same level of pressure. Now you'll notice it, it is pretty dark for a two B, but you can just still see the grain left by the pencil. Now the Kimberly, same level of pressure. Kind of identical to the moleskin and then the Bremen and this is a 3B and as you can see the 3B still is not it's almost exact to a 2B now the 9000 same level of pressure you just see that richness compared to the others now this is the same brand they're both Faber-Castell, um, but this one is the gold Faber. You do get a lot of coverage, but it's just not as rich. I, I Especially when I do figure drawing. Um, uh, lately, I've been super into figure drawing. Anytime I figure draw, and I, I, I kind of uh, tell any, anyone who's looking to get better at drawing, um, draw from life, draw the female figure, the male figure. When you draw those and you go back to drawing, uh, you know, your anime characters or your uh, plants or whatnot, you're just going to get this level of understanding that you just don't get from not having that in your, in your arsenal. So I, 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 I implore anyone who's looking to do um, art um, and really level up you know, and become a super saiyan, um, definitely look into doing life drawing. Um, I know it's tough because, you know, some people are not comfortable with nudity, but there are plenty of uh, dressed models that you can draw. Even if you have kids or siblings and they're just jumping around the house, you can do quick gestural drawings. And gesture is just kind of like, you know, just get, getting that, that movement of the body, get, get the rhythm going and you'd be surprised it's a lot better than drawing a static figure um, especially if you're planning on sending in your artwork as a portfolio um, 
They want to see that you can bring life to a character. They don't want to see a static image of a character with their hands behind their back. I see that so much in uh, kids' sketchbooks. And, you know, it's, it's kids, but, you know, if you're an adult, you just don't want to turn that in. Um, so this is the richness level. Um, all in all, this is definitely a buy in my book. Uh, you know, I always, I don't believe in, in the numbering system and I don't believe in ratings. Um, I just say either borrow it, skip it, or buy it. And this is definitely a buy for me, especially if you're super, super serious about continuing to do artwork with a pencil. Um, if you really, really like to push the values in a pencil drawing, this is a go-to set. Uh, I believe this set currently right now on Amazon is $21, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you can find the six, six pencil set at Michael's uh, for around the same price. So if you're going to pay that much, might as well go for the 12 set. Um, but I will recommend uh, just buying separately a 6B or an 8B because this set does max out at 5B. But um, other than that, I definitely recommend it and I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, the next video will be on the general um, compressed uh, charcoal and the multi-liner set. Thanks for watching.